Hello, hello! It is 10 to midnight on Friday, soon to be Saturday, the day of the Raidathon. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, the 24 hour Raidathon is hosted by Jade from Jade Ray Reads, hence the Raidathon part of this. And this Saturday happens to be the next round of it, so I'm definitely not going all out with this Raidathon because, quite frankly, I am tired. <laughs> I'm really tired. <laughs> I want to go to sleep right now, but that would kind of defeat the point of even starting in the first place, so. I'm going to try and hold off for a little while. I don't know how long I'll last, but you'll soon find out. But I do have a theme to this readathon, and I'm very excited about it because I am going to be reading retellings for readathon. This idea kind of came up after two of my most recent purchases, which are both kind of graphic novel illustrated style retellings of sorts, and so I kind of just looked at them and thought, I want to read both of these, and then I thought these would be perfect for readathon, which was then followed with I could turn this into a whole theme and threw a couple more books on as well. So this is my lovely little stack of possibilities. I say a little, it is really quite heavy. <laughs> So we have Greek Myths, which was written by Gina, my friend Gina, I'm very excited about this. And illustrated by Katie Ponder, this is just quite literally Jean retelling the Greek Myths and it's as stunning as you can probably see by the cover. Look at that! It looks so good and I wanted to read it immediately but I held off because I knew that this would be perfect for this readathon. This is split into the beginning, the Olympian gods, humans and the gods, heroes and about the myths, which we love. Very, very excited for this one and this was actually the initial idea behind all of this. But then I did also end up buying 100 Nights of Hero, which is a graphic novel which I have been meaning to read for years. <laughs> so this is by Isabel Greenberg and I believe this is a retelling of 101 Nights, 1001 Nights? What is it called? A Thousand and One Nights. And I just, I love this art style. Why have I chosen the most awkward books to hold in this video? But look at this! It looks incredible! I honestly don't know too much about it besides it being a retelling of sorts, but I do have a few friends who are big fans of this. I believe Cody is and Jean. So I'm very excited to see what this is like and with it being a graphic novel it should also be perfect for the Raidathon. And then I decided to throw a couple of more books in because why not? The first one being Great Goddesses by Nikita Gill, which is a poetry collection. Very surprising for me and I've just noticed this book is burnt orange underneath. I love this colour so much. So this is sold as a poetry collection inspired by great goddesses. <laughs> Basically women from mythology and I have heard that that is not entirely accurate. I know that Charlotte has read this, Charlotte being the person who I run Myth Take with and she says it's a lot more contemporary than she was expecting so I don't know whether I'm going to like this both because it's poetry and it's not really... I don't think it's going to be my style of poetry. I don't have a style of poetry. I'm not usually a fan of it but sometimes it works. I'm not entirely convinced that this one will work but I was willing to give it a chance purely because of the Greek goddess aspect of this but if it's slightly more contemporary and not quite as accurate a description as that I really don't know how this will go but there's only one way to find out and that's by reading it and with it being poetry, some of this is not really got too much on the pages, so should be a quick read at least, and honestly I should have just read it because it's so quick. <laughs> but then, actually, speaking of myth take, I do also have House of Salt and Sorrows, which I don't think I can do in this readathon because it's, it's a little bit chonky. This is around 400 pages and I am more in the mood to read the shorter illustrated books because I'm not really slumping with my reading but I'm just wanting quick reads so I don't know if this will be tackled during the 24 hours because I don't I'm not entirely convinced I can finish that in 24 hours but honestly I do need to prioritize this at some point soon because this is the June and July read for Myth Take and apparently we're having a live show on Instagram about this sometime soon and I just haven't read it still. <laughs> This one is a retelling of the 12 dancing princesses and honestly that's all I really know because the synopsis is pretty much the synopsis of the 12 dancing princesses where they all go off to a ball, they all start disappearing, the sister goes and tries to find out why that is. It's apparently gothic and really quick to read but um, this is me we're talking about so will it be? Probably not. So this should be my priority but honestly I feel like it will either be I read this book or I read the other three books and right now I'm more inclined to read the other three. <laughs> So I actually couldn't decide where to start out of all of those books. I couldn't decide whether to prioritise one or go for the other three. So I made Jade decide for me because it's her readathon and she gets to do things like that. And Jade did me an absolute solid and told me to read 
the Greek myth one first. So I am thrilled about that because I have been holding this off for a couple of weeks now, I think, and I just I'm so excited to read it. So I will be starting this one in now. Yep, it's 12. <laughs> I will be starting this once I actually get ready for bed and I'm very excited to do so. I don't think I'll read too much before I fall asleep, but we shall see. I could stay like this forever following you Just don't get too far and I'll be right o'clock on Saturday and I finished reading Greek myths a couple of hours ago maybe. Of course I loved it, it was just everything I like about Greek myth collections like this and this was actually a lot more informative than I found previous illustrated Greek myth collections which I really enjoyed because there were small details that I didn't even know about and I felt like I was still learning something new even though this is something that I do like to read about quite often so it was really good. Of course the illustrations were just stunning and I really liked how literally everything was illustrated down to the small objects that were paired with each of the gods. I also really liked the final section in this because it kind of goes into Greek artwork and how we know about the stories and the myths. It really breaks down how we even know about the mythologies in the first place and that's not something that I've seen included in a book like this before so that was really nice to see. The writing was just really nice. Like I said it was really quite informative and it wasn't condescending despite being for a younger audience so it means that people like myself who are maybe a little bit older can still enjoy it too and yeah really really loved it. I rated it five stars. I honestly could not find a fault in this. So after finishing that I went for a walk, I had my lunch and then I am now going to start reading Great Goddesses by Nikita Gill. Like I said this is the poetry collection. I don't know how it will go but I'm hoping it's going to be a quick read. So I'm just going to jump right in with this one. Disaster struck for the readathon. Uh, things happened. I ended up feeling really ill for many different reasons. <laughs> Mainly anxiety but then like it triggered a headache which I still have in a minute. It's now Sunday evening, I probably should have said that. <laughs> but the headache is just about going now but I did not read from about 3pm yesterday. So the readathon just was a complete and utter failure. 
But I still wanted to continue this vlog because I was so excited for it and I had all these grand plans of reading all these retellings but it hasn't really gone to plan so I figured you guys wouldn't mind if I pulled it over into another day and just made it a full weekend thing because I didn't just want to throw away the footage and the plans that I already had so it is currently Sunday evening. I'm not yet going to read like I am still pushing it back probably as far as I can possibly make it happen but the headache is on its way out and I'm hoping if I just delay it a little bit more until after I've had food and had a bath and everything then hopefully it will go completely and I'll be able to read at least one more thing this evening to go towards this vlog so that's my current plan didn't quite go as I wanted it to but hopefully you guys are okay with the rest of this <laughs> okay just a quick update because I look like trash <laughs> but I'm now halfway through the 100 Nights of Hero and I love it. I absolutely, I, I'm, I'm loving it. Like I'm not even realising it's very much a book that's a lot of stories within a story. The story that it's based on is about telling a different story every night and it's just, oh my god. Each of the stories that I've come across so far have been the sort of stories where I've not even realised how invested I am or how much I'm enjoying the story until you literally read the last sentence and I'm like oof that hit. <laughs> Especially because all of these stories seem to be centering around the injustices of women but it has a very particular tone to the writing which I really like and I don't know how to explain it. I am going to think on it and see if I can actually think of a way of explaining it but so far I'm just really really loving it. I think this could be a five star read but I don't want to say that yet. I don't actually think I've ever had a five star graphic novel so that will be intriguing but very much looking forward to getting back to it and yeah I'm gonna go do that. <laughs> so I don't think I ever explained properly the fact that I was actually reading The 100 Nights of Hero but I have it since finished it and oh my goodness I didn't realise how much I loved it until I finished it and by the time that they all came together at the end of this book I was just like <laughs> They all connected so well and they all had a point to make but it wasn't too in your face I guess. I don't know, it didn't really feel too harsh storytelling. It just made its point really naturally and ended up being the sort of thing where you didn't realise how invested in the story you were until it finished which I feel like was the entire point because there was this whole thing where lots of people were actually hearing these stories and being affected by these stories more than anybody ever anticipated. So the fact that that even happened to me while I was reading it is just like another tiny little detail that makes me really happy. <laughs> I was also surprised because there are quite a lot of references or parallels or even just straight up retellings of other stories besides 1001 Nights within this book because one of the stories within it is actually a direct retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses for instance. And there's also lots of tiny details that are taken from other books as well and if you know them they're there but you're not really missing anything if not. It's just a nice kind of nod if you do get the reference. I did expect to like this book but it just ended up kind of blowing my mind a little bit like it really got into my head and I've already been recommending it to people for different reasons so for instance to somebody I recommended it because of its dry humour and for somebody else I recommended it because of the art style. For somebody else it's because of the retelling aspect. I will say when it comes to the art style there were some pages which to me just seemed quite overwhelming because it has this sketchy style as if it's done in ink and I do like it for the most part but there's certain pages where it's just a little too much. There were just certain pages which kind of it took me a while to get my eyes to focus on the bit that I need because I also don't particularly love the font that's used for the writing in this. For the most part it's fine but for some reason on certain pages it kind of just took my eyes a little bit longer to actually adjust and take in what's being said. I don't know it wasn't too easy to read all the time and I am aware that it's just a stylistic thing so probably most people wouldn't have a problem with that. I don't know why I did but I did end up rating this 4.5 out of 5 stars. A really high rating. It's just such a nice read but it's really hard to explain why because it does have dark topics and trigger warnings. I'll leave a list of them in the description box. So it does have the dark side to it but something about the stories just kind of pulled it through and made it more hopeful and made it more almost like a fairy tale I guess which is probably the exact vibe it was going for so it was very successful in that. I did just want to mention as well that I did actually start reading Great Goddesses by Nikita Gill but I only read about 37 pages and I do want to wrap up this vlog now so I'm actually just going to continue this into this week. <laughs> so you'll be seeing my thoughts on this more then. At the moment I'm liking some of the poems and not so much others. Like it's very hit and miss so I don't know how this is going to go but you'll find out soon. <laughs> so I am going to wrap up this vlog here. I do apologise for it being just 
a mess and not what it was planned to be. I really wish it did turn out that way but here we are. I did manage to at least read both Greek myths and The 100 Nights of Hero, both of which were brilliant reads so we have good recommendations there at least. But for now I am going to wrap up this video so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so. Down in the description box you'll find information to the books I've mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!